It was exactly one week ago today that a new story broke out. I read to you from the New York Times of just last Wednesday, August 23rd. After more than a decade of outrunning accusations that he had doped during his celebrated cycling career, Lance Armstrong, one of the best known and most accomplished athletes in recent history, surrendered on Thursday, ending his fight against charges that he used performance enhancing drugs. Armstrong, who won the Tour de France an unprecedented seven straight times, said that he would not continue to contest the charges levied against him by the United States Anti-Doping Agency, which claimed that he doped and was one of the ringleaders of systematic doping on his tour-winning teams. Armstrong's decision, according to the World Anti-Doping Code, means that he will be stripped of his seven tour titles, the bronze medal he won at the 2000 Olympics, and all of their titles, awards, and money he won from August 1998 forward. It was stunning for many of us to read this story. Lance Armstrong, a hero to many of us, a seven-time tour champion, a man who had also beaten cancer, was now no longer a hero, or a hero certainly tarnished. The fact is that he had cheated. As I think about it, he lost at least three things in this revelation. He certainly lost his titles and all of those awards. Second, he may have lost his foundation. And how many of us wore those yellow, live strong bands for many years? And third, he has lost his reputation. What happened? Mrs. Melvin and I have a friend who is the medical director for Trek Bicycles, one of the major biking teams man who has spent time over and around the tour. We asked him at times, what about Lance Armstrong? Had he cheated? He said this was no surprise. Armstrong was part of a culture of riders who systematically cheated. Blood doping, EPO, highly sophisticated actions. Yet what was telling from our friend was also that everyone did it. In fact, he said ironically, you could look at pictures from riders in the tour, the riders in the lead pack, and now you can take the names on those pictures and knock them off systematically because so many have been convicted. In other words, everyone did it. Or maybe everyone did it. Or at least many did it. Armstrong's efforts were highly sophisticated. He was like others. He was part of a team that did this. He always claimed he had never been caught. And in that culture and at that level of competition, he seemed to think that that was therefore okay. And maybe in some ways he had tried to move on. Yet while a person can forget or rationalize or move on, facts are stubborn, or facts remain. And the fact is that Armstrong cheated and tried to hide what he had done, but he had done it. One of Mrs. Melvoin's and my favorite books, one we have reread together, is Robert Penn Warren's magnificent novel, All the King's Men. It is a fictionalized version of the story of Huey Long, the legendary Louisiana politician who rises from nothing to become all powerful, but at a huge price. One of the signal lessons of the book is that the truth always comes out. Maybe not today, maybe not this year, but sooner or later, the truth comes out. Does that change one's actions? It might. In Lance Armstrong's case, it created a shattering chapter in what life that had been legendary and full of success and also full of good. It provides a reminder that our character, yours and mine, is the product of the sum total of all we are and all we have done. It does not mean we have to be perfect. Heaven knows that none of us is perfect and none of us can be. But as we think about doing good and doing right, we add together the sum of all we have done. And sometimes, even a single bad act can stain a lifetime of good. Some describe character 
as what happens when no one sees you. We think of all the good and talent and achievement we saw at Lance Armstrong for so many years, and in the serious, terrible mistake he made when he thought people weren't watching. Lance Armstrong was seen as a hero not only because he had won the tour a record seven straight times, but because he had beaten cancer as well as his rivals. And now we see him exposed as a cheater, a doper. It is hard to get those words out, for it tears at the heart of what he had done, what so many admired in those days on a bike. His Livestrong Foundation has raised hundreds of millions of dollars to fight cancer. What happens now? Does the good outweigh the bad? Remembering that we are all a combination of good and bad, right and wrong decisions. We all hope that we can be measured and understood as a combination of all our actions. For that means we are human. Still the lessons from Lance Armstrong, or another recent fallen hero, Joe Paterno, will reverberate for quite a while. Sports have extraordinary sway in America, to the point where I sometimes wonder if our society, or at least many within, are a little bit too sports crazy. Yet if we think about sport as metaphor for the broader life we live, and sport is providing a stage for us to observe and learn from and participate in, then lessons from Lance Armstrong and perhaps Joe Paterno and others may help us think about how we want to live our lives. And that is, after all, what ultimately matters. Let's make this then, in all we do, a good start to a good school year, knowing that we are all human and also trying to do good when people see us and when people don't. Best wishes for a good year. Sixth form.